You're listening to The Real Short Box, a comic book podcast made for geeks by geeks. Hello, everybody, and thank you for tuning in and listening to The Real Short Box. My name is Donald. And I'm Jared. Galan. Jared, Jared, what are we talking about today? What is this? What is this topic? Uh, well, I think we came up with it, uh, you know, Family Guy, uh, they had that joke a while ago of what really grinds my gears. This is what really creases our pages. Uh, and, and that is basically the current buying and selling of the comic book industry and how it is right now and how personally, and, and I think we'll be in, in, in somewhat of agreement on this, how frustrating it is right now and oh, a little okay. silly. Jared, can you hang on a minute? I have a claim sale I have to do. So uh, wait, give what? Me... No, 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 no. I, just, I mean, uh, oh wait, 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 wait. Hang on a second. Somebody just made an announcement. Hot book. I'm, you know, hang on. I got to change my eBay price. Two dollars, two hundred dollars. <laughs> yep. Yeah, that's one of the big ones. You'll always see that on uh, on eBay. The moment there's an announcement. All the, the cheap books, like, for example, let's, let's pick one, uh, Peacemaker number one from DC Comics. It's mm -hmm. not even his first appearance, right? It's their, but, it's their first miniseries of him, yeah. Right. So it's DC's, I guess, first appearance, or they're just their first mini. I'm not 100% sure. Um, but either way, it's not the true first appearance of the Peace, uh, the, what is it, Peacemaker? Yeah. Yeah. It's not the true uh, first appearance, so... I, it's strange to me that, you know, this book was in the 50 cent quarter bin for the longest time. I would roll past that and go, yeah, right, guy's helmet looks dumb. And then I just wouldn't wouldn't get the book. And now right. the number one issue of that is what? It goes for at least, what, $50, $7,500, something like that? I, I, see, here's the thing. Now, if you listen to our podcast, we do a lot of prospecting pods where we say, hey, how about this book, uh, this character, uh, is probably going to heat up and we give you a good valid reason. And, uh, and, and a lot of people in the comic book industry have been doing that or have took off of that, uh, you know, have taken the reins of that and, and gone with it. And it's fun. I I've always enjoyed prospecting for books because it's just, it's cool to find that diamond in the rough or it, to me, the real cool thing is, is the, 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 the if you're right factor of like, um, yeah. I'll give you an example um, that, that hasn't even hit yet. So, or no, no, actually it did. It, it, one of them has. So after Black Panther came out and it was such a, a success, I remember going, shit, people are crazy about Wakanda. I'm going to start getting as many first appearances of Wakandan characters as I can, like the more obscure ones. Um, for instance, people started saying like, oh, wait, Shuri is uh, technically a Disney princess. She's like Marvel's Disney princess now. And also huh. the fact that she does take up the mantle of Black Panther. And this was way before Chad, Chadwick Boseman's passing. So this yeah. was like way, a way big gamble as far as like it, it could go up. And I remember grabbing that just going, it's, it's cool to have. I remember even getting a really random character named Gentle, who's a mutant from Wakanda. And his, his first appearance is still like a dollar something. It's like one of the new X-Men books or whatever. Uh, mm -hmm. And I mean, new X-Men as an NEW the, the like the new mutants team or whatever like from i don't know five years ago can't follow uh, it too much exactly. yeah the, the, so x-men uh has uh been unfollowable as far as like the title issue names and number yeah and, uh, I'm so well the good thing the good thing to sidetrack the one thing i will say is they have a book called once they redid this whole house of x dawn of x that's a long I'm, title what, oh, you know, oh. Or, no no i'm sorry powers <laughs> of x i'm sorry house of x powers of x once they started doing that, they had a graphic novel that kind of collected the story. And then what they, the smart thing they did, in fact, the very, very smart thing, is they have these books called Dawn of X. And what it does is it collects every issue of, like, that month of uh, those books. So, like, it'll have, like, X-Men 1, uh, New Mutants 1, X-Force 1, and all, all the current books that came out that month. It all collects them one in one. Oh, wow. Because that story... Uh, they it kind of like old Marvel crosses over a lot. And mm -hmm. so it, it actually is cool to read that way. It's not like weird. And you can still also, if you just like New Mutants, you can just buy the New Mutants trades or whatever. But I've been doing it where I got, you know, Comixology had a sale and I was like, I I'm going to get some of these Dawn of X ones so I can kind of see how them, 
what's going on in the mutant world, and it's actually been right. really fun. Speaking of comicsology, real quick uh, to sidetrack again, um, I found and and actually uh, fell in love with a uh, a library app. I believe it's called Overdrive. Okay, and I use that uh, to rent um, trades. Oh, cool. So, Instead of buying them on Comixology, because for me, it's like digital. I don't care if I own it. I just want to read it and then I'm done. Right. So for me, I, I don't care about that aspect of it. So the, the, the library doesn't have everything, but they'll get a certain amount of digital books that you can read, graphic novels. And uh, right now I'm reading um, Invincible because oh, I've never – yeah, I've never read it before. And you highly recommend it. And I was like, okay. So I think I'm on volume three at this point right now. And there's like four issues in each volume. So it's it's pretty easy to read. I can read a couple uh, issues in a night. And um, you know, I'll move on to the next volume and the next volume. And they have, what I can see, they have the entire collection. So I can continue oh, wow. to read it and, and go through the entire thing. And it doesn't cost me a dime. So oh, wow. okay. for me, yeah. for, for somebody that would rather use their money to invest in books Rather than uh, paying the money for the digital, this library app is a, is a lifesaver, and I, I can't recommend it enough. What's it called again? Overdrive. Overdrive. Okay. I will mm -hmm. be checking that out. Um, and now to go back on topic. So like what you said, so you know, I was saying about the prospecting of books, and I talked about the Wakanda stuff. So prospecting is fun, but lately with the, you know, and, and I'm, I'm going to throw some people under the bus, but I'm also going to commend them on their work. Uh, at the same time, but with apps like uh, uh, what is a key collector, mm -hmm. and with uh, uh, was it Comic Tom? Is that the guy? Yeah, he's uh, yeah. he's one of the. I think Comic Tom uh, does a, a lot of uh, podcasts and stuff, and talks about the hot books that's coming up. Right. So these these two indiv these two uh, uh, representation representatives alone are are like it, it's. I will always be happy for the comic industry to thrive because that's what I want because I love comics and I want comic shops to thrive. And strangely, in this pandemic, the you know you made the joke about the claim sales. Claim sales have been what's saved these comic shops, and probably I would imagine will continue even after once you know the vaccines spread and we can go in person again and get back to some normalcy. I would I do I completely see these claim sales just continuing because. It's a great stream of revenue for the for the shops and mm -hmm. for private sellers in, in their own right. The thing that that really creases my uh, pages here is that <laughs> there is a manipulation of the market and there is a there's no rhyme or reason to there. There used to be like, you know, it, comics are whatever you want to pay for them when it comes down to it. And it's usually kind of like uh, goes by what's the the highest you know now you know now with graded books it's like what was what did like this uh grade go for and what did somebody buy it for and that pretty much sets the the the, the telltale of what that book costs so if you have mm -hmm. an invincible one and somebody spent it's a 9.8 cgc and somebody buys it for 950 then you know what now a nine, nine and that's the highest you know you you have there that book is worth 950 to a thousand dollars and somebody will keep pushing it and I guess that's what kind of creases my pages on the shit is the, the pushing it. Like, I, mm -hmm. I want people to get their money's worth, but I don't like it when it crosses the line to where they're exploiting people. And I know you can totally argue everything I'm saying you can argue with. You can say, well, mm -hmm. well they don't have to pay for it. They don't have right. to do it. But it's like there is a point when I go, well, how many people are manipulating that poor person into paying that exorbitant amount when they actually shouldn't be you right know, which yeah. to me takes the fun out of the 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 collecting aspect and like what the fuck happened with like you know they disney just dropped all this uh new uh product as far as like what's coming for the future and of course books went ape shit and you know disney owns everything so every marvel Star thing Wars that, books are insane now in star wars books literally like we we're talking off air uh through text literally overnight i was looking at because i was like i've been watching a lot of star wars shit lately like i started finally watching the clone wars and i've obviously been watching um what do you call it uh, uh mandalorian mandalorian mm -hmm. so 
I, I've definitely been like way, way more in my Star Wars geek shit has been like booming lately. And I was like, oh, I wonder what Darth Maul's first appearance in comics was. And I looked it up and it's like the Phantom Menace number one, I think is his first cameo. And then Phantom Menace three is like his first full. Uh, and these books were like two dollars. Uh, right. Maybe maybe fifteen dollars because it was like some people were like, yeah, it's Darth Maul's first comic appearance. I had one in my like cart, like not cart, but, you know, like the watch list on eBay. Yeah. And overnight it went to like from like 15 to 20 dollars to about 200 dollars. Wow. And every copy across the board, everybody got this thing CGC and CGC hasn't even acknowledged that it's uh, the first star. You know, if you see it, it just says. Phantom Menace one, like in their notes, it it hasn't been registered yet as the first Darth Maul in comics. Um, obviously, since Dark Horse had a huge run of Star Wars books, like so many first appearances of like random characters, characters mm-hmm. that have had play, are just going through the roof without even any, you know, some of them factual mention of that they're going to be in something. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Everybody is just picking up or trying to pick up every single first appearance in every single Star Wars comic they could do. Mm -hmm. And I will say to his credit, uh, Julio from We Can Be Heroes comic shop, he told me about this way earlier this year. He told me, he said, Donald, you need to get Star Wars books. I'm telling you, that's where it's at. Uh, He's like, what is her name? Ashoka? Ashoka. Ahsoka, yeah, Ahsoka. Oh, he's shit, like that book. Whew. Her first appearance, he's like, it's it's gonna go insane. He's like, I'm telling you now, this is the book you need to get. And I, you know, I said, oh, okay, and I didn't do it. You know, I didn't bother with it. I was like, oh, yeah. it's Star Wars stuff. You know, the, it'll always be there. And sure as shit, he's a hundred percent right. You know, everything Star Wars, particularly that book, is going through the got the freaking roof, and you can't. Those I feel sorry for those that are trying to collect runs of things. Like let's say you you wanted to get uh, you know Star Wars. Uh, what is it? Uh, what's one of the ones? I think Rebellion or something like that that they had or Legacy. They've had mm-hmm. a ton of issues of these, right? And you're right. trying to get the entire run, and it just so happens one or two of these issues has the first appearance of one of the characters, and you don't have those issues. Well, instead of paying you know maybe fifty to a hundred dollars to complete your run. Now you have to pay a thousand dollars. Exactly. Yeah, for one just, book. Yeah. Right. It's just not fair because what's going to happen ultimately, and this will segue into something I want to talk about. Uh, what what will ultimately happen is it will be defined by time and by that character's relevance. Right. If that character in the next five years doesn't appear in anything, no one's going to give a shit about the book again. It's just going to die back off. Exactly. And if something does happen to that character that character needs to have enough relevance like for example uh darth vader darth maul those cats will always come back those are Mm -hmm. those are true villains and they will always be there in comics always a great book to invest in Mm -hmm. and have solid fan bases that are just die hard for those guys yes but if you go for example and you try uh, what was it? The first appearance. Um, we were talking about this just yesterday in Legion, uh, the yeah. first appearance of Legion and the first appearance of the Shadow King right. in Marvel Comics in the X-Men comics. Those were going for those were like fifty dollar to one hundred dollar books at one yeah. point because of the Legion TV series and the hype behind that. Mm-hmm. But once the Shadow King was kind of done and they canceled the series of Legion, that book now is another ten dollar book again. It's yeah. something you can just get. And those poor souls that paid $100, $2, you know, $200 for that book, expecting to, you know, make money or just wanting to complete a run, they're now out all that money. And they either have to play the waiting game or they right. have to accept the fact that they're never going to make that money back. Right. And which, you know, and we, we, we will nail the, into a, a, a coffin, uh, <laughs> like put every nail into the coffin of this. We, and we say it repeatedly, even to each other. Um, collect what you buy what you love collect yeah. what you love so if you if you love uh obscure d-list marvel characters and you know those first appearances are going to be like five dollars and yeah maybe one day you'll hit a jackpot and some random character that you just loved goes up and that happens um mm-hmm. cool but are you going to flip that book maybe maybe not because you love the character you might want to hold on to the book um so it it's 
it's a different, I mean, I know there's a lot of people out there who aren't really even comic fans. They're comic sellers, you yeah. know, like, like you can tell a, a person who owns a comic shop, uh, if they're a comic, most people who own comic shops are comic fans. Yes. Uh, uh a lot of the people on Instagram who are selling and flipping books, um, I'd say it's a half, it's a 50, 50 split. Like, yeah, they're in the comics, but they're mainly into just, just flipping and selling books. Yeah. They're into the cash that the comic books will, will bring them. And they've grown accustomed to these characters because they've had to deal with people about these characters and they had to understand and to their credit, do their research. Right. So with that, I praise them, but I feel like we're getting away from the heart of, of what this industry is about. Right. It's to me and, and, and Kevin, when you ask him, he'll always tell you, he'll be like, it's about our future generation. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, when we die, we're not going to be taking these comic books with us. Well, no. some of us maybe, but <laughs> we're not going to be t taking these comic books with us. We need to instill the importance of the stories and the history of these books and these characters right. to uh, our, our youth, uh, you know, our, our future and let them know how important this collectability is and how important this industry is. Right. Uh, comic books, I don't think, will ever go away, but they're definitely going to change. We've seen a lot of change in, in our lifetime, and it's going to keep changing and evolving. But what won't change is the collectability of the original first appearances of these characters and, right. and you know, the importance of them. Uh, you know, I... Wolverine, uh, the Hulk 181, Wolverine's first appearance. Yeah. I bought that book. I paid an absorbent amount at the time, what I thought was. And right. even Kevin at the time made fun of me for it. He was like, I can't believe you overpaid like that. Uh, I paid $650, I think, for a 5.0 graded Hulk, Incredible Hulk 181. Right. And... Yeah. That was a lot of cash. And yeah. right now, a 5.0 graded Incredible Hulk 181 goes for about 2300 to 3100 depending mm -hmm. on, on who you buy from. And now I feel great about it. I'm like, hey, you know, I, I didn't do too bad. But again, that's a character that has playability. He's got legs, you know, right. no one. I don't. It's, you're hard pressed to find somebody that truly hates Wolverine. Most people really enjoy him or love him, and right. he's just a character that's in, in, in endearing to people. And he will continue to be important in the comic book industry and in films. And that's something I don't feel that will will go down pretty much ever in in, in price. Now that we've got to, you know all these movies coming out and and the importance of the characters understood by a lot of people, even non comic collectors want a first appearance of Wolverine. Totally. And and what and we've also talked about this too, which is like the heroes are are always most likely going to be solid. You mm -hmm. know, like a first uh, uh Ghost Rider, a first, you know, um uh Wolverine. Like the, these characters are like that's like their first their heroes, their yeah, anti heroes, whatever, first Punisher. Like those books are just they're only gonna go up. Like you know, they're only going to be, uh, those are only good investments. So like I collect a lot of first appearances of villains because I love villains, but those mm -hmm. books are always, uh, like a tidal wave of like, or, or like sea change. It's always like up and down, back and forth because, you know, especially if you're, if you're going by, you know, how a lot of books go up now, it's because there's a TV or movie, uh, connected. If you're going Marvel, they almost kill the villain nine out of 10 times uh eventually or they kill him in the first movie you know so like mm -hmm. you 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 buy these characters and it's hot for like that minute and then as soon as the movie comes out they're like oh wait they're dead they're, they're probably not going to use this guy again but you know you got a dr doom you got a uh even a kang the conqueror like these these are villains that have been around for a long time they've stood the test of time they're going to be around for a while because they're fan favorites and and they don't want to see them die you know or, or be you know even the people in the in the in the movie industry know that like this character has you know we we should keep them around. Mm -hmm. um, even a character like Thanos, like yeah, he might be dead, but we all know that 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 guy can come back any any second he wants if we, if if they want right. to. It's it's and an easy did, rewrite. That, yeah, that book did dip, but you know, um, not not a ton, but it did dip. You know, there's right. It's uh, back down from, you know, it's no longer a thousand, fifteen hundred dollar book. It's it's a six to nine hundred dollar book again. So it just so and which is another thing. So if you're buying these books like 
unless you have multiple copies and you got to ask yourself, do I want to sell this for some quick cash? Do I want to sell this for some money? I'm, you know, investing in something else. Uh, I know you and I do a lot of like, do I want to sell this book to pay for or pay off another book, a bigger book, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's, and it's all taste. It's all a matter of taste. I guess, you know, what really, you know, creases my pages. I'm going to, I love saying this now is, is that when the fun is taken out of it and it's about like, Hey, that's a cool character. It's about what can I get for it? What can I get for it? Or the complete nonsensical shit of like star Wars is popular. Every star Wars book. Like if you look at every big Marvel, uh, uh, old comic property, like they had oh for a while, uh, transformers, um, any of these kind of non superhero wars, you know, these, books, uh, and, you know, dark horse too. They're just, it's not Jared, even like Jared, you're you're coming in and out, wafting in and out real good. So, oh, I'm sorry. Um, it's not even like that. There, it's just when it's like across the board. Like every Star Wars book is like twenty dollars now. You know, yeah. when there's no relevance to it. When it's like, was there even a first appearance in that? They're like, no, but it's a Star Wars book or it's a GI Joe book. Like, and I'm, I'm going to okay. tell you again to Julio's credit from We Can Be Heroes. Uh, they're getting a they're getting a lot of plugs from us today. Um, he gave me a list of all the first appearances. And when I recently went to a comic shop, uh, they had a big sale, a 40% off sale on all their back issues. And they had all them, all these star Wars books priced at three, $4. Oh, wow. And I was like, okay, well, let me see if they have any first appearances. So I took that list he gave me and I looked through and sure enough, there was at least 20 books in there of first appearance. Oh, shit. So, you so scored. I said, yeah. yeah. So I said, should I, you know, uh, if there was more than one copy, I left another copy for somebody else because I'm not a pig. Um, right. You know, I I, I respect the, the game enough that uh, I, I don't feel like I need to do that. Right. Uh, and that, you know, maybe somebody else would like the joy of finding something, you know, in the wild like that for cheap. So, um, but yeah, I picked up all these issues because I thought, you know, um, yes, I can, I can use this um, to sell stuff. Or I could also collect it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look through and I'm going to actually read the issues and see how these characters are. See what if there is an appeal to me. And if I like that character, I'm going to keep that issue. Right. And if that character doesn't matter to me in the story, I don't like it or something about it, then yes, I'm going to sell that book and I'm going to make money off of that book. And right. I will use that money then to buy something else that I love. Right. And that's how collectors do to feed feed their their rabid fandom um right you know they sell books to be able to buy books because usually they they either realize oh crap i've spent too much money or their wife realizes oh crap (laughs) i've spent too much money in in which case you have to kind of rein it in and go okay well what if i sell 10 of these books then i can buy that one book i want and then you know so that's that's another interesting way to look at things. And it's also an interesting way to, to do it when you're collecting. So that's not something to overlook when you're collecting is that you can do that kind of thing. Well, but I could don't totally, be a dick about I could, it. yeah, don't be a dick. Exactly. Don't be a dick in anything, but yeah, but that I will con- completely attest to the latter as far as, uh, totally. I am the husband whose wife is like, yeah, that's cool. You collect comics, but like, can we not have like, a package a day coming because like, you know, you've got kids and I, and I, I have needs and, and I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But now when I kind of go through my collection and I go, I see like, if I have doubles of stuff or if I see if things that I'm not too attached to, I go, you know what, I'm going to put these up on a marketplace or I'm going to put these up on Instagram or I'm going to, I'm going to try and sell these so I can invest in. So, so now I can go like, Hey, you know, that book I just bought totally covered. Like you, nothing from our account, nothing like that. Yeah. All just, I flip those books, you know, that that's a great feeling, but you have to, you know, as a, as a collector, you have to look at uh, again, what, what you love and what you're willing to get rid of. Yeah. And those that walk in and don't collect at all, they're willing to get rid of everything. It's just a matter of timing. So, you know, you wonder how long these people sit on these books or if they're prospecting like we are, or if we're, they're just, uh, you know, trying to, 
uh, talk people down in price and then just flip it for you know 20% profit. You, you don't know. Everybody's a little different. So it's an interesting uh, avenue per se when it comes to to collecting and, and sales with comic books. I mean, but, I will say I, I give total props to people who do just flip for like uh, either either like a way big side hustle or like a living because mm-hmm. it's it's exhausting because it's like. You have to constantly be looking at books and looking at those claim sales and looking where you can get a good deal. Um, because the hard thing now is like a lot of people know what they have. So, you know, it, it's kind of like finding either like, like what you found, like, which is the, the kind of the best case scenario. If you go into a shop and they're like, this is what we're selling them for and go grab what you want. And you're like, yeah. sweet. And you find, you know, these, these gems or, or, or possible gems or whatever, but it's, uh, it's it's exhausting to be like those people are like how can i make you know is is it like is it cents you know can i make two dollars a profit off of it you know it's like how much do you want to make from it you know right because i've had books that i was like you know i might try and flip that and i'm like you know what i I, i'm I'm just gonna have to get my money back and i can maybe get my money back on it yeah and then sometimes you actually lose money but you just want to get rid of the book and you're like i need some extra cash so I'm going to get rid of this book. I don't really care about it that much. And yeah, I'm going to lose $20 on the sale, but it, that's fine. You know, I'll, I'll make it up somewhere else. And you, you usually can. But one, another thing that really kind of creases my pages is when you go in, for example, and this is back in the day when you could go to comic uh, conventions and stuff. When you go to a convention and you walk up to a booth and they have something priced at, let's say, uh, for example, I was at a convention in Los Angeles and they had the first appearance of Black Mask, which is, a, if I recall, it's a Batman book. Yeah. Um, and they had, uh, what did they have on it? They had $90 on the price, which mm-hmm. at the time, they were expecting the, uh, there was rumors that Black Mask was going to be in a movie. They hadn't even announced the uh, Harley Quinn Birds of Prey movie. Right. And so there was just rumors. And so they were speculating and pricing it such. It was purely a $50 book at best around that time. So I asked them, you know, thinking, well, this is a really pretty book. It's in good shape. I said, well, can you go 75? No, I can't go down on that book. I won't go down on that book. And I was like, oh, he's like, yeah, there's a movie or something coming, I'm sure. And I was like, oh, okay, um, cool. Well, and I looked right at him and I said, I'm not going to buy from you. Thank you. And then I just walked away. <laughs> Uh, and, and I didn't feel bad about that. And I know that seems kind of like a dick move on my part, but if more people did that, if more people walked away from those high prices and people can't sell it, then the book's going to go down. People aren't going to hang on to it forever. They're going to need money. They're going to want to get rid of that book. So they're going to lower the price, price reduction. You'll see online or in their booth or something. Uh, the whole, I always felt the whole reason to, go to places in person is it's much easier to talk somebody down on, on a, on a book. Mm-hmm. It's harder to say no in person than it is on Instagram, for instance. That's true. For sure. So yeah. if you're doing a, an Instagram sale and somebody's like, Hey, will you take $50? No, <laughs> that's all you got to do. <laughs> yep. You don't have to do anything else. And if they say something bad, you can just remove them. And that's that, you know, and then no one knows it's, uh, it's over. But if you're at a booth and, you know, you say no and somebody creates a stink, then you start to look bad. So right. you have to be more careful when you have a booth. And you have to be careful as a seller or as a buyer that, uh, again, that you're not being rude to everybody, but you're being firm. Right. So another thing that you and I talked about is go in with a price in mind. Look mm-hmm. up the value of the book. Look up what people are paying and say, is this book important enough to me? to pay that amount. If so, write it down. Write that book down. Write its amount down and know that that's what you're willing to pay. If it's an $80 book and you're like, I don't want to pay 80, I'll pay 75. Even if it's a $5 difference, write that down. Write that you'll pay up to 75 and that's it. And if they want 80, don't bend to their will. Walk away. Yeah. And, And I know that sounds crazy, but if enough people start doing that, these prices won't be going insane. There's, no, there's and, mo- and most, most sellers, 
within reason, we'll yeah. work with you. Because yeah. I think everybody, any smart seller prices their book maybe $10, you know, higher because they know that somebody's going to come in and be like, can I get it for this? Yeah. And be like, I can go this, you know, that's another thing of, yeah, like setting your initial price. Um, or you get the insane people who are like $20,000 and you're like, I, I don't even know why that book would be a hundred, you know, like I, there's always the one guy on eBay who puts the book at like some insane price because they think they're going to win the lottery. Mm -hmm. Now let's get into the things that, okay. These are a couple of things that I saw years back, people kind of try to exploit and then they just didn't take. And now they're taking, and I, I don't know why, especially when we're, I mean, maybe it's because people are like desperate for something new because they've been cooped up in their houses for so long. But uh, two things. One is newsstand books and the other is uh, previews books. And I'll explain real quick for those who don't know. Um, on certain books from a certain time, um, you could buy when they would sell them at an, an actual newsstand uh or there was a direct edition, which was, means they ordered it from the company and it comes straight to them. And basically how you could tell is if, like for a Marvel book, if it had like a Spider-Man insignia and usually sometimes it even say direct uh, sale, that's a direct edition. Uh, and then the newsstand ones had a barcode. Um, they used to, I used to see like it would be like uh, on eBay, somebody, and this is years back, would be like, I have Spider-Man 129. I don't even know if they had this one. Spider-Man 252 newsstand. And, but they would have no difference in price. They just would say it. And I looked it up and I was like, what the hell is the difference? And it told me, and it said, this does not really affect the price. There should be no price effect because it's just one is one and one is the other. Um, last six to eight, maybe year, year and a half, uh, all of a sudden people are like, because newsstands don't really exist anymore. Um, everybody wants a newsstand edition. If you have a newsstand Sometimes it could be the difference between twenty to a hundred dollar difference for some people, whether they want that or not, because they think it's more rare. So let's first go on that. What are your thoughts on the whole newsstand uh, uh, direct market, you know, difference? Um, if you it, see a difference, it doesn't. It doesn't matter to me at all. I mean, look, if I want the first appearance of uh, Venom and the direct edition I'm, I'm just making an example they might not have no, this. No, that's a perfect I, no they do they, they that do. is a good example that is a, um yeah. if if uh if i wanted the first appearance of venoms amazing spider-man 300 i don't care if it's a, a direct edition or a newsstand yes i get that a newsstand set on the shelves so that means there's more likelihood of that to get damaged so there's less out there of that book in a great shape, which right. makes it more rare. But a more rare newsstand, for some reason, it, it doesn't mean anything to me because it's, it's the, the direct edition is still their first appearance. And I don't like the fact that you get that barcode on the cover. I think that the barcode on the cover, um, if, if you take, for example, the first appearance of Spider-Man 2099. Right. And I think that's Amazing Spider-Man, like 365, if I recall. Something like that, yeah. It's one and, of those hologram ones. Yeah. Right. If if you look at that cover with the new stand, and then you look at it with the direct edition, it looks better with the direct edition. The new stand, the lines on the new stand, the scanning lines, the barcode, kind of distract from the cover. Uh, totally. Whereas the, yeah. the direct edition looks much better. It lo looks smoother. It looks, it looks more stylistic. So I prefer that. That's just me. That's my personal preference. Why this happened and how, I, I don't know. Only thing I can think of is somebody ran across a bunch of newsstands and they said, hey, you know, to their buddies that also sell books, hey, I got a bunch of comics. They're newsstands. What say we go on and we say that newsstands are more valuable? Right. And they all get together and they're like, yes, let's do that. Right. So you get this yeah. cabal of, of sellers stating how important these newsstand covers are. Next thing you know, the newsstands are going for 10 to 20 percent more. Yeah. And yes, we are talking comic book conspiracies, but for sure. But for real, like I, I definitely think that and then the previews I'm going to talk about next is is a straight up manipulation of the market from sellers. And I'm not mm -hmm. blaming like certain. I'm just saying from from a, a good amount of sellers, put that out there and put their foot down on it. And we're like, I'm back in this 100 percent. 
because this is not a new thing. It's been, or people know about newsstand and know about direct editions. Uh, so I think it's totally manipulated. Um, and that creases my papers, uh, but uh, my pages. But here's the one thing that, here's another one that I think actually gets me even more creased is the previews books. So these were completely ignored until this fucking, uh, uh, I mean, they were <laughs> talked about, but until this, uh, what is it? Miles Morales one. So previews books are, uh, basically, uh, there was like, there's like Marvel previews had a book where it was like literally just previews of like, you know, it have maybe a couple of, uh, interviews with a writer or creator and be like, Hey, this new book is coming out. Um, or uh, an image, uh, uh, Invincible. We talked about Invincible. There was two different books that had Invincible previews in them, and people were really trying to sell those as like the first appearance of these characters. And mm -hmm. if you look at for Invincible, for sure, and even Robert Kirkman is like, those are not the first appearance. Those are called previews. Never has a preview been considered a first appearance because it's called a preview. So right. yes, it's technically the first time you're seeing that character, but it's not the character in their book. It's just the fucking preview. You right. know, when you go to the movies and you see a preview, you don't go, gee, I just saw the whole movie. <laughs> you saw the fucking preview, you know? So right. fucking, so they tried to do it with a couple of different people. I think they tried to do it with, um, Oh God, it was another big character. They, they, uh, Another Marvel character was, was it Miss Marvel, maybe, or something along those lines? No, not Miss Marvel. Um, was it Gambit? I know they did that with. Well, no, Gambit was like a cameo or something like that. Yeah, there's another Marvel character where they tried to really push that, like, well, this is actually their first appearance, and people were like, no. And even the Invincible books, like, had a big like push for a little bit. Kind of got some money, like you know, some people made some money off those books, but now they're back down to like mid you know mid-level priced books and invincible number one is the the big money book um mm -hmm. but like then this miles morales one for some reason i think it's because he's on the cover of it so we already know the whole ultimate fallout for the first miles morales went gangbusters when they announced the video game and you know i think also people realized how popular that into the spider-verse uh movie actually was and that they're making another one and that you know that's a whole franchise um, so that book went gangbusters still, still is up there and really high. Um, but then it's like, people just like want it to keep the momentum going. And they're like, well, what about this previews book? And people are like, yeah, there's a previews book. And then somebody went, but what about this previews book? And like, yeah. Yeah. And then some fucking, you know, Ken Uncle just was like, I'm going to fucking pay $900 for it. And now everybody's like $900. This book is worth $900. So once again, yeah that a manipulation because i'll tell you straight up you can manipulate an ebay sale super fucking easy you can manipulate that sale because people a lot of people like the key collector and stuff like that that he does a lot of his research on like look at the sales he, he does like you because you can get the like uh what is it the analytics on uh on what books are selling and what you know are there increases in this and he uses those a lot like he'll be like this random book that's still three dollars is selling a lot more so i'm putting it on my prospect list and um so i could technically go on ebay and put a book out there and then have my friend pay me and we just kind of keep you know i it's just fake money being spent pretty much and i'm not actually selling it to him and he's not actually buying it but it sells for 900 dollars. i mean i don't know how much they could actually really trace you to do that but you can completely manipulate the market by doing that yeah and i do wonder on some of these insane sales if people are doing that and then after that, they go ahead and actually sell it to somebody who's going to pay that. I'll tell you what. I have a few friends that they, they know the industry very well. They're in, you know, we, we know it well, but I mean, they know it like more than us. Yeah. They're in it deep. They, they know some of the, 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 the godfathers, the, the creators of some things and, uh, and the ones that push and move things along. Um, they tell me that, uh, I mean, there's some deep conspiracies that, that they tell me like that there is a, a push to move certain books and stuff. And one of those things is that uh, quietly and, and very slowly, you're going to start to see all the eighties books um, disappear. Like a, as far as like all the cheap eighties books mm -hmm. and that's going to be the next wave. We're already starting to see it with transformers and GI Joe. 
Mm-hmm. And we've had seen that to a little bit of a point with the movies and stuff, and I get that. But it's become even more so now. And now we're starting to look at properties. There are ALF books out there that you can't touch for less than $100. <laughs> <laughs> this is true. Yeah, this is true. And, and that's for a different reason, mind you, though. It's, it's yeah. a whole uh, sexualization of a seal that, that we can get into it another time. Yeah. But um, there's, some, there's some deep conspiracies now as far as like these people got together and they decided that they had all these 80s books and now they're going to make that the next big wave. And there's a, a conspiracy of they have a, a puppet that works for them that, that gets online and pushes these books hard mm-hmm. and starts to make them money. And the more money they make, they can pay that person to push them more. And it's, it's a very fascinating story. And again, it's a story. It's, it's not truth. And it will remain untruthful for as long as it's not brought to light. It, it'll mm-hmm. just be another X-File as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. But it's fascinating to hear, and it does make you stop and take a pause and go, is that really what's happening? Is my beloved comic book industry, has it become this? Is it you know solely for monetary gain and not for collectability and fun any longer? Mm-hmm. And then you run into somebody, inevitably at a shop, and they look at you and they say, hey, I'm getting back into comic selling or buying. and I want to collect uh, some X-Men books or something. And, and I actually had a guy on Instagram uh, very recently. And this really, this really uh, creased my pages. Uh, he wanted to get the first appearance of um, uh, Omega Red. Okay. And the first appearance of Omega Red is a Jim Lee 90s X-Men book. Right. It is had millions of copies printed off mass amounts yeah it's a very very well-known book for being just in the dollar bins alone because there's so many of them i was watching as people were commenting and, and this guy said hey uh i'm i'm looking to get this first book this first appearance does anybody have one and i saw somebody say yeah you can find one here for 50 bucks and i about dropped everything in my hand Mm-hmm. And I was like, 50 bucks? Are you kidding me? So I got on there and I responded and I said, dude, I said, hold out. I'm sure you can find it in the wild for a couple bucks. And then I got blasted by other people that were telling me that that's not the case and that's impossible and not where they're from or not where they go and blah, blah, blah. Because you're because you're take because that is a completely perfect example of a completely manipulated book. Because, right. yes, there's there's thousands, hundreds of thousands, maybe millions of copies of that book. Yeah. And so I told the guy, the guy that was asking about the book originally, I said, you know what? I said, I'm going to put my my books where my mouth is. And I said, I, I've got three or four of these books somewhere at, at my place. And I said, when I find it, I said, I'll tell you what, it's yours for 10 bucks. And I was like, I'm, I'm not, you know, I won't charge you anymore. 10 bucks, because that's what uh, I told him. I said, at most, I said, pay $10. I said, don't pay any more than that. And I said, you're good. So I told him, I said, I'll give it to you for 10 bucks. And he's like, oh my God, that's amazing. You know, and he reached out to me and, and thanked me. And he told me a little bit about his story that he had just gotten back into collecting. He wanted to get some key books, um, but he really loved Omega Red. That was like one of his favorite characters when he was a kid, like X-Men characters. And he wanted to get that first appearance. And he said, I'm so glad that you're able to help me out with this and I can get it for cheap because now I can save some of that money and use it for another book. And I told him exactly what I'm telling everybody in the audience right now that's listening. It, I, I understand, and I love books, I love comics, and I just want to help. Like, I'm, I'm here. If I have extra books, and Jared, you know this personally, if I have extra books, I will sell it to you for a very good price. Because I don't it, – it, for me, it's not – If I, especially if I know the person or if I can make a personal connection with them. I'll I'll let them, you know, uh, take the book for for a nice deal for for a very good price. I don't want to take advantage of people that way. So for me, it's the fun of knowing I ha- already have a copy, letting somebody else have that copy for cheap and enjoying that book. If he resells it down the line, I don't even want to hear about it. You know, I don't want to know. Totally. Right. But the the story is there, the truth is there that I can see, and it's just a very fun thing to be able to share with somebody. Completely. Oh, I mean, I, I recently 
I made a big purchase on a book. I got that I, I, uh, the first goon, uh, Eric Powell's the goon, mm-hmm. and um, we, and I was like, okay, I'm gonna sell some books that are keys that I don't. I sold uh, a, I sold a first Deadpool, which some people would be like, are you fucking nuts? Like, why would you sell? I I I like Deadpool just fine. I like the movies just fine. I'm not in love with that character. So if I can get what the book is worth. And I had a raw copy that was probably a 9.0 or something like that. If I could get what it's worth, and then it pays off a book that I actually care about, like the Goon one, whether one is going to go up or not, I don't care. I wanted that Goon book because it, that character means something more to me. Deadpool means literally nothing to me, aside from like uh, 90s. And like, hey, I remember that. And it was from my private collection. I bought that book off the shelf. Like I remember getting it because I was like, oh, this character looks cool. And then he became huge, and I just had the book. But... I sold that book to a guy who really wanted it mm-hmm. and I even let him pay me off. And even while I was going to sell it to him, they made the announcement that uh, Disney was going to be using doing Deadpool three. And I texted him back as a joke. I'm like, Hey, you saw the announcement, right? I'm like, it's five. I'm like, it's like 500 more now. And he's like, and you could see for a second. He's like, Oh, cause he was like, I would get it. And I was like, no man, it's fucking your book. Like <laughs> we have right. a deal. It's your book. You want it. I don't give a shit, you know? Yeah. I, I sold a first Gambit the other day, which I know for a fact that book I could get, you know, more later when that character is eventually used in, in Disney, you know, X-Men movie. Mm-hmm. I don't care. I, I wanted to sell it to get money for a book that I cared about. Yeah, yeah. And I happen to like Gambit. So for me, like from the X-Men animated series, I really liked him. So for me, it was like, I need, I'm going to keep that. I'm going to hang on to that book. Right. But there's a whole ton of other books that I could care less about. I got rid of uh, first uh, appearance of Kamala Khan. Right. And I knew that's your girl. And I yeah. know that, but I also know you already had one. And for me, it was like, I, I don't care about this character. Like, it, it really doesn't matter to me. So I'm going to get rid of this book and use that money to get something else nicer. And I think I got a uh, first Black Knight um, for a cheap with that money. And, uh, felt pretty good about it you know right, and that's a perfect example of sell what you can sell to buy what you love you know yeah, you love that I character love so, the, so, yeah, yeah you know, i love the black knight i got the, you guys got me the helmet yeah so i'm a huge fan so for me that was a great that was a win-win and right now as we're talking i'm looking up on uh, instagram and somebody had just posted about strifey's strike file uh an executioner executioner song addendum uh i don't know if you've seen this book jared but it is basically you open it and it's just a list, a look into the um, the mind of Strifey and all. Yeah, he writes like little computer. Right, uh, like it's yeah. a dossier thing. Yeah. yeah, it shows all these villains and heroes and stuff. And right now somebody's stating, they're saying, uh, featuring the first appearance of Holocaust and the first appearance of Thren- Thrend- Trinity. Trinity. Yeah. Uh, this It said it actually has a couple more first appearances as well. Is that a first appearance or is it like a cameo appearance? Because they're not exactly, yeah. in and, the book, in the book, you know, it's and, more like a and somebody we did on, I was on a, uh, I'm on like some, uh, 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 Facebook comic, low grade comic book site. And we did a pay it forward thing mm-hmm. where we all just sent a person. We got, we did like a little randomizer thing and we got a person. Uh, my person was fucking overseas. So I, I spent like a hundred dollars <laughs> paying it forward to just ship this guy his stuff. And I gave him some great books too. And, um, and somebody sent me uh, a bunch of books and, you know, I'll be honest, it was a bunch of crap, but I, I paid that for it. I gave it to a bunch of kids that like really, you know, would have, would love it. And they did, but there are two books I kept was like a pit. Number one, like the image pit that Uh was in there and strife strike file, because I saw people saying, this is the first Holocaust. And And I was like, okay, cool. I just got this book for free. If, if I sell it for like 20, you know, eventually cool. Yeah. Yeah. And who knows, maybe you'll get a hundred bucks out of it and that'll cover that shipping cost for you. Exactly. Yeah. That's the hope. But I think what we're saying here and that, you know, as we're going to be winding down here, but I think what yeah. we're saying is that, you know, there, there's a lot of things that go into it. You just buy what you love. Um, that's the number one, buy what you love. Don't, don't, uh, don't overpay for books. Um, make sure you have a list of what you want and how much you want to pay for these books and, and don't stray from that. Yeah. And, um, and I'll say even to the sellers, I, I want you to make a profit, but don't oversell to where you're fucking somebody over because yeah. I will tell you there are dumb people out there 
there are naive people out there. There are people that will be manipulated very easy and they will pay some of those exorbitant prices if they're hyped well enough. And, and if you can hype them well enough. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So don't, don't overpay, um, buy what you love when it comes to villains again, buy what you love, but know that nine times out of 10, a villain's value will go down as a first appearance. Once that character's used and finished and killed off in the comic book world, in, in, the, in the cinematic universe, so to speak, in the comic book world, that character might be around forever. It might come back and die and come back and die. Look at Apocalypse, for God's sakes. Uh, yes. that's, that's another good one. That book was a $200 book easy before the movie, the X-Men movie, uh, X-Men Apocalypse. But then the movie came out, and now it's a $20 to $50 book at best. And, uh, you know, some people have a hard time selling it because it's just not a lot of people care anymore because of that. But Kevin, for instance, that's his favorite villain. So right. uh, favorite Marvel villain. So uh, he would scoop that up. You know, he'd be like, oh, boy, first apocalypse. So, you know, if, if you love it and you just don't overpay for it, because especially if it's a villain, that value will probably go down unless we're dealing with like a Doctor Doom. Or a Magneto, those cats will stay mm -hmm. up there in value. I mean, and, and same thing with Spider Man's Rogues Gallery, uh, Batman's villains, you know, mm -hmm. villains, all those characters are so ingrained in the hero. And you can't tell the hero's story without mentioning these villains. That makes right. those villains important. You can't mention Fantastic Four without Doctor Doom. Yeah, he's key. Yeah. So that's that's going to be a character that will continue to increase in value, and that's a good book. Um, you know, and and don't be fooled is another thing that we want to say. Like with the previews, uh, I, get the fuck out of here with that. You know, I'm, yeah, that, I'm that never is a complete pay, money grab, and somebody's right. trying to exploit you. Yeah, I'm not going to overpay or pay anything for a preview book that was for free at a comic shop that mm -hmm. wasn't even the real first appearance of the book. It was just a preview of the book that's coming out. Not doing that. Uh, direct edition versus newsstand that's up to you you know you, yeah you you make your choice you've heard our argument against newsstand in in four direct edition um in not even against newsstand technically we're just indifferent so it doesn't matter to us we're not going to pay more for something that's for sure and neither should you yeah and, no and uh don't don't fall into the hype train you know if if, if something you know, if they say ROM, you know, a ROM movie's coming out and you're like, oh God, I got to get that first appearance now. Why? Did you like ROM? <laughs> you know, have you been collecting the series from Marvel and you uh, had one issue left and you're panicking? Uh, what, what's the story here? You know, if you don't like ROM, are you getting that book so you can save and then like sell later to invest? Are you using it for like a, as a stock market investment purpose? What's going on here? So just think about that. Exactly. Doing stuff yeah. like that. Uh, anything you have to add, Jarrett? No, just it's about it's about fun. Have fun, it, you know. Enjoy it. Enjoy the if it's if it makes you unhappy or it stresses you out or it makes you like uh, you know really frustrated because you didn't get the book at the right time and you didn't put the, it, that's not fun, you know. And for me, like I have to check myself, you know. I have to go like, wait, I'm not, I'm not. This is not fun. So you know what? Get out of the speculating thing for a little bit. And just buy books that you like. And that's what I've been doing. I just buy books I like or I buy what I like, what I want to read or a first appearance that I'm really interested in, whether it's going to go up or not, because that's what I want. If I'm out in the wild and I see a book that, hey, that's a good deal. I could flip that for 20 bucks. Sure. Why not? Yeah. Yeah. Why not? Again. Yeah. Um, just just do it for the passion of, of collecting and, <laughs> and enjoy yourself, I think, is what we're saying. So yeah. with that, I think uh, we're going to wrap this up. So thank you, everybody, for listening in. Uh, we are we do uh, about once a week, uh, sometimes every other week uh, during the holidays and stuff. We do live podcasts on YouTube. You can follow us on there. Um, subscribe to us on YouTube. Please do that. Um, we're trying to up our subscribers. Uh, we do a lot of live videos. We do a lot of uh, audio podcasts. Sometimes we do little shorts and fun things like that. Uh, you can also follow us on a bunch of other podcasting platforms. Uh, Jared, I think we're on what? Uh, let's see. We're uh, on Sprecher, iHeartRadio, iTunes. I mean, any anywhere you can get a pod, 
you want to listen yeah. to the pod, you go, for, you go look at the real it. short bucks. Yeah, yeah. you can find us. And if you don't find us, reach out to us and let us know. And we can get on there for you. So you for can sure. listen to us on there because we're willing to come to you. We'll come to your house. You know, we'll come to your house if, if you want us to. We'll so, wear masks. We'll social great. distance, you know. Right. Out in your yard and we'll talk to you about comic books. We don't care. We'll do it. We're crazy. Yeah. But, uh, you know, thank you for listening. Again, uh, my name is Donald. My name is Jared. And, you know, when you're out and about and, you know, maybe you get your vaccine and you get your second one and then, hey, we take our masks off and we can maybe see each other in that beautiful, evervescent comic book shop. Thanks for listening, everybody. Have a good have a good day. This has been The Real Short Box. We'll see you at the comic shop. Thanks for listening. 